Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a second video uh, where I'm looking at the G3, using the G3 uh, sketch constraint in SolidWorks. So, again, I'm in SolidWorks 2021. Still haven't got around to putting 2022 on, but since I talked the other day, I'll put 2020 on. So now I've got 16, 17, 2021 installed. They all seem to be cohabitating okay uh right okay so this is an update of a previous uh, exploration where i was using uh, variables equations to control a form so this is the pebble pebble variables as you can see it's like a pebble shape or a bar of soap extremely smooth as it turns out I had much more success today using the g3 connection than uh, my my first attempt the other day so I'm going to just roll back through the model and outline how I built it so I've got a sketch controlling like a quadrant the width length and height and then I've got another sketch that controls the width and then I have two sketches which are like the center section the main surface and for the uh, surface going in the XY to the, uh, the, the section going in the xy direction they're both arcs and then i've created a plane normal to the this arc at the end point right and created another plane over here which again is normal to the end point of that arc then i've created an axis which runs between those two planes i just made and on this end plane i've drawn a section which is again an arc but so i can get drop on the surface here so I can control this curvature on this end of the surface and then create another arc on plane 4 here and this, this arc is resultant because it's controlled between this point here and this point here and its centre point is on the front plane. Uh, then I've made a boundary surface through those and the boundary surface is normal to profiles, 100% tangent influence on both of those. So normal to profile, normal to profile. Okay, next up. I've created a perimeter from the plan view and that's using a conic and the conic is normal to the, the, the planes that we're going to mirror everything around and then the row value is controlled via my equations and then I have a main surface trim sketch which just chops this uh, main surface back so a couple of values here again it's a uh, conic uh, and with another independent control value controlled via variables. So then that gets trimmed back and then we get into creating some sections and this is where I've used the G3 connection. So I have a Fizier curve, degree 5, so it's degree 5, that's got 6 CVs and 4 of those are controlled by the, or needed for this G3 connection here. So 1, 2, 3 and then um, I want this control polygon segment to be vertical so that means when I mirror this over that's going to be a G2 connection across the center line I'm not worried about trying to get a G3 connection across the center line I, I suspect it will go flat so we'll just go G2 because that's matching itself as tangent but because it's getting mirrored over it'll have equal curvature there Okay, uh, and as you can see there, the curvature graph, it's a nice um, tangent connection on the cones there. So it's the G3 connection. And then I've created another section over here, which is set up in the same way. And the spline has the same, uh, it's the same degree. Okay, and now I've created a 3D sketch. Uh, equidistant lines here. Um, I'm just going to create planes normal to this edge and through those points okay so i had a bit of a, a failure thing that will fail all the time um it's one of those things you might have had before of using splines and you've you've um changed some piece of geometry somewhere just a slight bit and um and your sketch will fall over and, and all you have to do is you go into that that spline and you delete the tangent connection um because when you create uh, curvature continuous or a G3 it adds tangent as well so curvature continuous or create curvature continuous constraint will add tangent as well and the tangent seems to fall over for some reason 
So in this case, you see here I've got a perpendicular. Um, so instead of tangent, I'll show you what I've done. Seems to be much more stable. So I have created an intersection curve through the surface, uh, added a control uh, construction line that is tangent to that curve, and then I've added this uh, line here, which is 90 degrees to that tangent line. And then in the next blend section, I've made my first control polygon segment there uh, perpendicular to this line. And it seems to be stable. I know it's a little bit of mucking around, but at least, at least you don't have to keep going in there and go delete tangent, add it again. And now I've added a second section over here, and I've done the same thing with this tangent constrained fix and another blend section. Okay, and now I've added a whole series of points. Okay, so these points are used in the boundary surface here, and I created those by um, using point, uh, pick the um, section, and then evenly distribute, and added two points. Um, but it creates two features there, so if you actually go in there and have a look, it's got a distance there. Um, so what did it say? Let's have a look. Uh, 3.88 millimeters. But if I increase this blend list distance, so if I go into my equations here, um, my blend distance, if I made that 11 and rebuilt, and then measure this distance, it's actually updated. So there's something going on in the back behind the scenes there. So I don't know what SolidWorks is doing. Okay, boundary surface. So I've got tangent to this edge. Normal to our centre line, 100% tangent influence, and in the second direction, I've got those uh, sections. So one, two, three, four, and the end sections are normal to the plane they're on, 100% tangent influence. And then in this direction as well, I've got two sets of uh, connectors. So that's, um, so you can see here, connector set one and connector set two. And I have dragged those points and clipped them onto the points that I just created before. So that just seemed to help with the flow of the surface around here a bit. It was actually quite beneficial in doing that. So, so there's the surface. Yeah, as I said, using those connectors and using those these points just to improve the flow. Um, I don't use that feature too much because I, I find if you have a section you know the connectors you can't influence the sort of curvature directly uh, whereas you can with adding a section but in this case I didn't want to add another section running this way because that would have probably introduced more trouble but adding these connectors just sort of um, controlled the surface a bit better as you can see with the mesh preview so it's flowing quite nicely Okay, and then I've just got a series of mirror and knit functions at the bottom, like this, to give us our full body. And then a thicken at the bottom. I won't roll forward to the thicken at the moment, because if you do that, you can't double click on anything. And the end result is fairly smooth. So, turn our zebras on. So it seems to flow quite well around the corners. Um, and off our top surface. And if I turn on my um, homemade light lines, like that, everything seems to flow quite well. There's no big hiccups around here. Um, Yeah, so generally looking pretty good. And this is all controlled through my variables. So got just it's just an easy way to come in here and change things, you know, if you want to change the the outer corner sharpness. And then hit rebuild. Okay, makes it softer. You can get different things happening if you change the um 
internal sharpness here so the blend gets bigger through here um, or if you want to change the the outer corner drop so that's the outside corner of the surface here so it gets a bit tighter through here um, yeah so it's quite handy just have everything in one um one area and because i did this uh tangent constant fix thing constraint fix sorry it doesn't fall over um every time you do anything to it which is which is always welcome And if I drop this into my, um, using my SolidWorks to Rhino shortcut, just so we can really crank up the, adjust the mesh in here. Um, so the mesh there is nice and fine. Just to give it a really good looking over. Looks pretty good. It's actually giving me a headache. Um, what else could we do? That's the only downside though, is you get to see the, the naked truth of how heavy your SolidWorks surfaces are. So if I extract one of these and turn the points on, you've got a gazillion points. And if I type in what, it says that the degree 3 surface in both directions was 26 CVs and 28 in the other direction. So that means your curvature, if we turn the curvature graphs on, You'll see it's quite faceted, that's because that's internal discontinuities because it's only a G3 surface, so... Anyway, somehow SolidWorks manages to control all these points and smooth it all out. Turn on the environment map. Yeah, so there we go, nice sort of smooth pebble form. Um, yeah, so much more luck this time than my first go. So I suspect that's only because I'm constraining these splines G3 on one end. Uh, I'm not having that little nightmare I had the other day, having to constrain a spline with G3 on both ends. Yeah, so I'll stick this file in the description if anybody wants to download it and pick it apart and see if you can improve anything. Always welcome suggestions. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.